Hi everybody, it's Gio from Microsoft at Florida International University and today is January 13th, 2014. It's 6.27 p.m. right here and in this video I'm going to show you the intermediate feature of object correspondence. So object correspondence isn't something specific like object families, however it's something that happens in Construct 2 and I'm trying to explain this to you so that I can show you how things work because if you know how to use object correspondence, which is pretty much a verb I made up, um, you'll be able to effectively reference objects correctly and you'll be able to do very cool things with um, the, the methods you're creating. So in this example, I have a layout size of 1366 by 768 and my project size is the same. Now on the actual layout, I have a button object being um, three different instances of one button object, and then I have three different instances of one uh, small text object, and I also have one instance of a big text object, right? So ideally, what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to somehow correlate this button with this number, and this is going to be called button 1, and somehow correlate this button with this number to make this button 2, and somehow correlate this button with this number to somehow make this button 3. So, I'm going to go into the event logic and show you a little bit more about this, so you get a little bit of um, an understanding of what's going on under the hood. So, I actually have just one event, and it's going to do everything I need. So, before we get uh, any further, I'd like to also tell you that when you have two conditions in one event side of an event, that acts as an AND. So that pretty much means both of those conditions have to be true in order for the action to execute. If you wanted either to execute, you could just say make or block. So that's how construct2 works in that sense. Now, my first condition is I'm saying when I touch a button, right? So if I do that, the good news is I'm able to check if I press a button. The bad news is I don't know which button I'm pressing. So my next condition says if I'm overlapping a small text object. So this makes a correspondence and says that the button is touching text, right? So now you're still maybe wondering what's going on, but this is where everything pieces together. Now on my action side, in order to use this small text dot text variable, that I'm calling, or uh, this value I'm calling, I have to have some sort of object to reference it, right? Because if I just said small text dot text, I don't know what would come out. It would probably be blank because by default, the small text is empty, right? So now if you think about it, construct is reading us like this. It's saying, okay, I've touched a button. The button's overlapping a text. So let's say I touch button one, right? It's overlapping a text with a text value of 1. So if I actually read this logic, or logical statement, what's going to happen is when I click that button, the big text is going to be set to you have pressed button 1 exclamation mark because small text dot text has a value of 1 and that's the told uh, you tell that to construct when you check if it's overlapping the button you click in this specific case. So any button you click is going to be overlapping a text object in this specific case. So you will actually have a value for each button and you'll be able to call it. And at the end of the day, everything runs well. So let's get to it so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So now I click this first button, right? And it says, you've pressed button one. And then I click the second button. It says, you've pressed button two. And I click the third. It says, you've pressed button three. And I can do vice versa and click in whichever order. And it doesn't matter because it's using the object correspondence uh, system. Or in other words, it's referencing objects that are being directly correlated to a specific button, right? So um, I hope that helped. And this is just a tip of the tip of the iceberg because there's so many things you can do. And if you realized, I didn't have to create unique buttons. I take I took one button class, and I created three instances of it. I took one small text. I created three instances of it, and I was able to effectively handle everything in one event. So the way this actually works is if I were to create several more instances of this, I would only have two object types 
and one event, and I would be able to tell the difference between an unlimited amount of buttons. So that's a beautiful aspect of using this correspondence system. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.